Uh, my name is Malcolm Adams. I'm 22 years old. Good morning, Dr. Brookins. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm fine. My name is Julio Vargas Essex. I'm the Director of Admissions at Metropolitan State University. Good morning, Dr. Anderson. Good morning, Mr. Crenshaw. Well, good morning, Mr. Adams. Um, we're at Henry High School. I'm an academic school counselor, master in 10th grade, middle years program. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the ACT, the American College Test. Nationwide, 240,000 African American students were tested, and they say that only 10% were college ready for science, 14% were college ready for math, and 30% were college ready for English. Now, overall, um, students of color do not do well late on standardized tests. Okay. So, it doesn't, and a lot of my time, a lot of times, um, our history and our background exposes us to a lot of different things that the ACT doesn't relate to. And a lot of students are hands-on learners. Some, are, some kids can read and understand things. So that's my bias. So a lot of times, but student, it doesn't mean they don't know it, it's the way it's presented to them. And so I'm not against uh, standardized tests. Like I said, I think they do have their purpose, but I also know that they do not tell the entire story. The ACT was uh, created to project how a student would do in college. And that's the purpose of an ACT and an and SAT. It's actually a filtering system for uh, some colleges and universities. I received my GED, or General Education Diploma, which is equivalent to a high school diploma. Well, at Century College, we're an open admissions institution, which means that any student that has graduated from high school is admitted to the college. So a high school graduate or someone who's earned a GED is uh, admitted to the college. And then all of our new incoming students have to take a placement test that assesses their college readiness in reading, writing, and mathematics. And we see very similar results to what the ACT research has shown in that um, probably 90% of our students coming in are not prepared for college level mathematics. And uh, about 40% to 45, depending on the year, are not prepared for um, college level writing or college level reading. So we have very similar kinds of preparation gaps between uh, the, the incoming students and those that actually have started at Century. It, it brings to light a, a larger systemic issue within education today, um, and that is the educational gap um, between uh, underrepresented students such as African, uh, excuse me, Native American students, uh, Hispanic Latino students where you can see the research indicates not only are they not scoring or performing at the level, as, the level of their their counterparts but they're also not attending or graduating post-secondary institutions at the same rate and so I think that really uh, illustrates sort of some of the, some larger systemic issues that are going on uh, in our society that need to be addressed. There are a few different angles that we are approaching this issue with in terms of looking at uh, for college and career readiness and in particular the achievement gap that we see between our white students and our students of color. Going back into the high schools, Century as well as many of our sister institutions uh, have spent a great deal of time over the last four to five years working with the faculty in the high schools and connecting them with the faculty at the college. Uh, through those conversations and that work together, we are aligning our curricula, better understanding what is taught in the high school, what's taught at the college level, and how to ensure that those curricula uh, are seamless and aligned so that the student is getting the kind of background they need to be successful in college. So the, on a direct instruction approach, that's one of the most significant things that we're doing and we think will make a big difference in making sure that all students uh, leave high school college ready. One of the things that we do is uh, we work with, uh, it's called MINAC, it's called the Minnesota Association of Counselors of Color. And what they do annually, every fall and spring, hold uh, uh, a series of college fairs and information sessions at low economic institutions, high schools throughout the Twin Cities. So high schools that are pre-identified to have large underrepresented students, uh, students that aren't statistically likely to attend a post-secondary institution. And so what we do is participate in these college fairs and information sessions, 
providing information which hopefully leads to accessibility and what we found that is the power of information and knowledge to be able to how to navigate the college process and how to be successful in identifying resources is the first step in order to create accessibility among underrepresented student populations. Well first and foremost the parent is the first educator of a child. They, they are the first teachers and uh, sometimes it's a matter of I guess encouraging parents to walk in that role. Full hats that uh, an individual has to wear and teacher is one of those hats. The average ACT score which is like 21, our ACT score for students of color is around 16 to 17. Our students of color have lower rates of success in terms of transfer, in terms of program completion, or even staying continually enrolled. So we know that is a significant issue for us, it's something that we're working hard at addressing. There are criteria in place. Um, each A child coming through Battle Creek Middle School and any other school uh, in St. Paul, and I imagine in, in the other middle school in the state of Minnesota, you're gonna have what we call core classes. And the core class is gonna consist of English, language arts, math, science, and social studies. So each child has to take a, uh, a core class every quarter, every semester, for the three years that they are in middle school. And then while they're taking uh, those classes, they have, uh, have to meet the, the standards for that, uh, for that grade level and, and that content area. And so in preparation for high school, you know, that preparation begins in middle school, which getting students acclimated to taking the core classes and then meeting the standards attached to the, to the content in those core classes. I believe I dropped the ball in middle school. I would have to dig back into my high school. And before that, even in middle school, you could say the courses were maybe not the best courses to prepare me for college courses. Back in the days, they used to hold students back. <laughs> Until you were 16, yeah. you would have to stay in eighth grade. But they get, then they would let you out because well, of age. What do you yeah. have in place? Well, education not? has evolved, you know, since the, since that time period, and we don't pr uh, participate in social promotion. Uh, we do provide students with opportunities uh, to meet those standards. Yes, my scores did indicate that I was college ready. My first college that I attended was McNally Smith College of Music. I'd say academically I was not ready for the college work. It does anger me some that, you know, we've fallen so far behind the curve. I know I know there's um, there's gonna be a uphill battle to overcome those numbers and statistics. We need to engage in systemic change at the institution. It's not simply about one new initiative, but there's also a lot of work that we need to do as an institution to look at how our policies and our systems and our practices reinforce uh, that achievement gap. And frankly, it gets back to a discussion about institutional racism and, and what does that mean? How, how do our systems perpetuate that disparity and that gap? And this is something that's new for us to be looking at as an entire collective. I believe there are many solutions to increase those numbers in the African American community as far as college readiness goes. Um, one of the main solutions I believe would just be as simple as support. The, those uh, core classes, reading, math, science, and, uh, and I, would, I would say to go along with that writing for the ACT and the SAT. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those tests are good, you know, they have a purpose, but, you know, children are human beings and they have to be educated very holistically. So you have to meet the uh, social needs and the emotional needs of, of students as well as the, the, uh, the artistic needs of, of students. And so you have to make sure you have a balanced curriculum and a balanced education and, and a balanced system of, uh, of uh, support to, to educate and progress progress children. We don't want students just coming through the system just, you know, that are great test takers that could, you know, recall knowledge and give you factual information, but we actually want critical thinkers. We want students who can think for themselves, question and critique the information that's given to them, and then take that information and actually impact the world. My name is Ariel. I go to Cooper High School. I take my ACT.
this Saturday, October 25th. And I will be college ready. After the man get the males, you know, they fare worse than anyone because on the standardized test, the ACT and the SAT, we're 100 points behind. Now, mathematics, all students, the average was 501. Oh no, SAT. Whites, 514. Blacks, 411. That's over 100 points. by an award from the National Endowment for the Arts, Artworks, the McKnight Foundation, and SPNN.